Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm of course Sybin bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. I know I've been sitting on this for a while and you guys are probably super antsy for me to cover this, but today we'll finally start Magic Core 19 lore here on the channel. No excuses here, I uh, should have been on this at the jump, but I have been going through some not so great physical stuff lately and I just moved. So it ended up taking longer to set things up than I would have liked. Anyway, we're here now, ready for the story bringing us the return of corsets. But first, a reminder that you can support the best source for Vorthos content on YouTube by joining the Vorthos army on Patreon. Not only do you support the videos you love, but you'll also gain access to our Discord, signed cards, and a score of other exclusives you can only find as a member of the Vorthos army. Check out all the great stuff and consider joining us by checking our Patreon linked in the description below. And now, back to the lore. So let's start this lore recap with a little backstory on Magic Core 19 itself. We all should know by this point what core sets are from a mechanical and business perspective. Fairly simple sets meant to bring in new players, etc, etc. But for a set like that, what does it mean for the story? Well, core sets have historically lacked an extensive storyline. However, some of the later sets actually brought a lot to the lore table, but they weren't initially designed with that in mind. So with Core 19, it looks like, luckily, they have continued that push for a good narrative in these core sets. Good news for us. Still, it doesn't progress, at least it doesn't appear to progress, the current story of MTG. Not so much as it gives us a glimpse to its past. M19 is looking back at the life and times of the main baddie right now, the draconic planeswalker Nicol Bolas. As you guys well know, the story of Bolas, some of his motivations and very past, has kind of been, well, convoluted. M19 looks to give us that backstory, the whys to the events we most remember involving Bolas. That's M19 in a nutshell. So let's begin that journey with the first chapter, The Twins. Our story doesn't exactly begin with Bolas like you'd think, but rather twin girls climbing the face of an ancient and forbidden mountain on the plain of Tarkir. Tarkir in this story is post the events of the original Tarkir block, that being Sarkon had gone back in time and changed events. Dragons here never went extinct, and elder dragon lords now rule over the various tribes of humans on the plain. The girls, one being a hunter and the other a shaman, are members of the Teemer Frontier, well, formerly known as the Teemer. Since the rise of the Dragon Lords, they are now ruled by Atarka, a furious and very, very hungry Dragon Lord. The dragons had banned the use of magic, especially shamanism, meaning the twins' journey up the mountainside is one of great risk. They've come here because the shaman sister had heard whispers in her dreams, whispers of knowledge, a story that must be told to the people of Tarkir. This story would be told by the Windfolk, a group of elementals once allies to the teamer, but have since turned their back on the clan, who gave up their mysticism to appease their dragon overlords. Luckily, this one young shaman is left to hear their tale. The twins reach the Windfolk, but accidentally cause a massive avalanche. Using her magic, the shaman protects herself and her sister, but attract the senses of Atarka's brood. The Windfolk share their knowledge and they head back down the mountain, but the skilled hunter of the twins easily kills it and brings down a number of goblin corpses back to the village. Yummy! They feared the village would have been destroyed by the heavy snow and ice, but again, magic shielded them, meaning their beloved grandmother was unharmed. Now, this isn't just some old crone. No, this is actually the leader, well, the former leader of the teamer, before Atarka forced her to disband their beliefs and bow only to her and her brood. Their grandmother was Yasova Dragonclaw. Yasova was actually instrumental in the death of Ugin and the end of the dragons on Tarkir in the original timeline. But things changed, and well, here we are. The story the Windfolk shared with the young shaman was meant only for Yasova, and it was the story of Ugin and Nicol Bolas, their true story. You guys ready for this? So, on some unnamed plane, the Elder Dragons were being born of the Ur-Dragon, the aspect of Dragonkind itself. 
It was laying eggs all over the place. The rise of the Elder Dragons. Now, unlike what we thought was true, this wasn't near the start of the multiverse, before other beings evolved, etc, etc. They were hatched on a world already inhabited by humans. Primitive and aggressive humans, yes, but people all the same. Regardless, these massive eggs came smashing into the world, leaving craters, scaring away hunting parties. And from them came the Elder Dragons. They were born and named themselves, the first of which being Arcades Sabbath. Then the others followed, and the biggest shocker of all? Twins. Yes, twin elder dragons born of the same egg. And of course, this was Bolas and Ugin. Unlike other elder dragons, Ugin named Nicol Bolas, and Nicol Bolas named his brother Ugin. Right from the very beginning, we see the differences of these two emerge as one of their siblings, a sister, is attacked by a hunting party. Although powerful and intelligent right out of the egg, they were still very young, vulnerable, and inexperienced. The humans, with their nets, spears, and hunting dogs, did take heavy losses, but managed to bring down the massive Elder Dragon. As Ugin and Bolas watched, they both wanted desperately to help their sibling, but their position caused them issues, as well as Bolas was still stuck in the egg himself. Bolas wanted nothing more than to break free, attack the puny humans for daring to strike at a dragon. Ugin, on the other hand, wanted to sit back, come up with a plan rather than going in guns blazing. Bolas was unbridled fury. Ugin was tempered, calculating. The story kind of just follows the twins as they look for more siblings, relatives from their progenitor. Bolas is concerned only with revenge for their fallen sister, while Ugin wants to warn the others of the hunters. Ugin also pondered and asked questions like, where did they come from? Where was their progenitor? Bolas gets into a scrap with the hunters and realizes how easy it is to kill humans and their dogs. How much he enjoys it, watching his prey scatter in fear. Uh-oh. Still, Ugin seems to ponder the world more, taking in visions from the landscape, saying to Bolas that someone was looking for them. Yasova Dragonclaw. Uh, what? This is where the story snaps back to current day with the twin girls talking to their grandmother, Yasova Dragonclaw, as they're interrupted by Atarka's brood. <laughs> The three massive dragons had come because they had sensed the use of magic, the magic that protected them from the avalanche. They demanded they sacrifice their shaman. Luckily, Yasova was pretty quick with her tongue, appeasing the dragons with an offering of goblin corpses the girls had brought down from the mountain. The villagers packed up their things and went on the run, with the group heading to the one place to find more answers. The windfolk gave them this message, but it was given to them by someone else, Ugin the Spirit Dragon, although it was known that Ugin was dead. They needed to travel to Ugin's grave to find the next piece of this puzzle. And that, you guys, is the first chapter of M19 lore. Obviously, the revelation that Ugin and Bolas are related is huge here. Now, a lot of you may think this isn't a big deal or had already thought they were related, but really, we had no knowledge of Ugin being an elder dragon, not to mention Bolas' twin, so this was major news. So was the birth of the Elder Dragons themselves. Sure, they're still probably an old, old race, but at the very least, they don't predate humans on this plane, which wasn't the original case. One thing I'm confused about, though, is the timeline on Tarkir. This is the line where Ugin remains alive, right? Like, the dragons have forced the tribes to bow and give up previous practices. Well, in this world, Ugin is alive and well. So if Ugin's dead, wouldn't that mean the elders would be at war if not defeated already by the clans? If you guys know anything more on this, please let me know in the comments, because it just seems a little off. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for this week's lore recap. Let me know what you thought of this story in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, share it across the multiverse. You can also support the channel on Patreon by joining the Vorthos Army. Check out all the exclusives available only to our Patreons linked in the video's description. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time here on the Ether Hub.